that regard, what have you seen, what do you see out of him out there in Puerto Rico over the last couple of years? Uh, absolute growth in his uh, his leadership, Stu. I mean, you're exactly right. Um, just from a on the field and off the field um, type mentality, you know, he always feels like if he can get involved early, I can get him going for the rest of the game to kind of lead the way. And, um, you know, him getting the game ball this week, um, really the last two weeks has been impressive. You know, him starting the game off with a big third down stop, um, him getting involved early on the big third down stop over the middle. Um, some of those things, a third and one tackle for, you know, for loss. Um, some of those things are just, just critical, you know, like um, he's taking his game to a whole new level where he wants to eliminate some miss ops, you know, like two minutes at the end of the game. He makes that type of play again. You know, it's kind of those legendary performances you can talk about and making those kind of picks and those moments. So he's done such a really good job of taking over from a not just a, a show mentality, but kind of a leadership, stand up, talking, um, being in the meeting room, being engaged. Some of the things that he's done in walkthroughs has been a little bit different um, for him, so to speak. And, um, and that's a good thing. That's a credit to his, his growth, development as a leader. And I, I love it. absolutely love it, too. He's been the best version of himself that I've seen um, since I've been here. You know, he's healthy. Um, he's moving well. He's rushing well. He's playing to run well. Um, he's making plays every single week. Um, you know, they're really out there splitting times. Both of those guys are starters. We view those guys as starters. And those guys have gone out and made a bunch of plays. And Terrell has definitely showed up in a big way and a major part in all the games that we played. And um, I, I credit him for the work he's put into it in the offseason, the work that he's put into it just in general um, to get to this point. I'm, I'm proud of him you know, for what he's done. Uh, Claudia, you know, um, I think everything, every week is different for me. You know, I always tell you stats are for losers. And, you know, people that search for stats are the people trying to justify what they do. Um, my whole justification comes within wins. And if we can have a way to win every single week, that's the way we're going to try to win. Um, you know, I'm not out here trying to self-promote and make it just be aggressive just so I can say, hey, we went out there and shut people down or whatever case may be. I like to, you know, but we're going to do whatever it takes to win that week um, no matter what. And that's just my mentality and it always will be. You know, this is the 49ers that I know. You know, long as Kyle Shanahan runs that program, um, these 49ers will be the same. They'll have the same mentality, the same toughness. Um, and Jimmy being back out there, you know, getting their guy um, that's led them the last couple of years, you know, um, obviously um, playing through a little rust. You know, the guy didn't have an offseason. He didn't have a preseason. You know, I think he's in his second full week of practice. Um, just, to, just to put that in perspective for everybody that wants to be Jimmy haters, um, I think this guy is, is, is a tough football player that always plays the game well, that is built similarly to what I was talking about with Claudia. I think all he cares about is winning. Um, I think his winning percentage just shows that. I think what he's been able to do, taking a team to the Super Bowl, taking a team to the NFC Championship, when he's healthy and ready to go, um, he'll be his best version of himself. And he'll get back to that. And um, just not this week, I hope. You know, um, playing these guys, man, it's, it's nine a week. You know, that means a lot around here. That means a lot um, in the two, two for the two franchises. And probably more so us than them. Um, but they definitely had our numbers the last couple of times, except for the most important one, which, uh, you know, we got the bragging rights right now. So they're going to come in with a little chip on their shoulder. You know, obviously what's going on over there uh, doesn't really matter. Um, it's really about us. Uh, I know your thoughts and feelings on stats. Um, so you may hate this question. No, not uh, really. But do, would you like to get to what last year you guys got to a point where you were able to rush four more consistently? And, and there's so many, so much savviness in the back end of what you guys do schematically. So would you like to get to a point where you're blitzing less? Those are, um, those are stats I do care about. When you're talking about affecting the quarterback, that's part of our philosophy, right? So, like, uh, you want to be to affect the quarterback as much as you can, any way you can. But particularly if you can do it with a four-man rush, that makes your day a lot easier. So, um, when I say stats are for losers, you know, it's kind of a cliche thing. But there are some stats that are definitely um, a part of winning. There are some stats that definitely you want to use as a, a measuring point for your guys and for what they do. Um, and definitely affecting the quarterback is one of those things. It's part of our philosophy. It's part of who we want to be. And I think the guys... I want to do that too. So, like, can we improve our four-man rush? There's no doubt. There's no question about it. But I think it all ties together. Can our coverage get stickier and tighter and more aggressive? No question. You know, that, those are the things that all tie together and make the guys get better and better throughout the season. And ultimately, that's what you got to do throughout this long season. Gary's going to be really angry at you. You cut him off. But I'm going to let you go. He, you should have seen the look he gave me.
the media room goes to fisticuffs. No, um, the young defensive backs have been really fun to watch. Um, and it's been like that, you know, from the beginning of camp. You know, um, what are you talking about to Kobe Durant? What are you talking about DK? What are you talking about Robert Rochelle? They've all been exciting. They've all had exciting days from the very beginning of training camp. And it's kind of carried over into the season. Somebody's getting fined right now on site. But it's been, um, it's carried over right into the season. And um, who knew that we'd have the opportunity this early to play this many guys and this amount of guys at that time. But it's happened. And it always happens. It always will happen. And they were ready to go, to credit to those guys, whether it's been Jacoby, DK, whether it's been Robert. Um, these guys have stepped up in a big major way. Um, Terrell Burgess, you got to put into that category. Last week, going out there and playing a little bit for Fuller. Um, these guys have done a great job going out there playing and being young DBs and doing exactly what we asked them to do in order to get wins. Um, and right now, we're 2-1. And, one, and uh, they've done a nice job of getting us to that point, and we got to continue to grow. I knew he had something yeah. tough, guys. He was trying to hold it in for me, but facial expressions don't lie. Finish your question, Gary. But, you know, they had been historically no question. effective running the ball against you guys. Um, what is the key to repeating what you did in the NFC Championship game, and how much of an impact can Bobby Wagner have on that? That's a good question. Um, Gary, you know, let's go back to the short history that I've been here. In that first game, you know, they came out and they got after us. You know, running the football, it was – uh, I believe it was 156 yards. I think it was, you know, cloud of dust. I think it was like 40 plus attempts. That's a tough day. They got, you know, time of possession. They were able to maintain and dominate rundowns, another stat that I care about. Um, they were able to do that. The second time we came out, we did a much better job and we lost it in the two minute. Jimmy Garoppolo made some big time plays in that two minute and won the game for him. And I think those things were all learning lessons to build up to what we did in that MC Championship game, talking about how you want to throw hands in the run game to be effective like we were in that game and how you want to finish games at the end with the mental stamina that it took in order to win that championship game. In order to go out there and get that stop for T. Uh, T. Howard, I believe, to get that pick at the end of the game, for Aaron to get that rush, all those things, the mental stamina that it takes to get those things done, um, that's the type of game it is. That's what I mean by it's nine or week. You know, all those things matter. All those things will be in play. Um, and Bobby Wagner, for us, can do nothing but come out and make big-time plays, big-time tackles, tackle as strong as he has. We gotta, you can't do nothing to get better. And no disrespect to what Troy did. I actually showed Troy last week and what he did in that NFC Championship game and the violence and the, the temperament he brought to that game, um, to their guys, I, I thought was a different level for all of us, and I think it was different. Raheem, what did it mean for you last week to have so many new defensive backs, so many new defensive players on such short notice, and how can you carry that over as a you know, Kurt, I think I don't I don't know if it meant anything to me. Um, I think it's a credit to the coaches that are responsible for those players in those positions. You know, you talk about Jonathan Cooley, um, you talk about Chris Shula, the amount of work that they put with these guys throughout the offseason, um, throughout the training camp, and throughout the development of when we do have the starters out there. I remember when I was a young coach and when I was in Lance Shelter's position and Mike Tomlin would say, Hey Ra, I got the first four, you got the other guys. Tell me who's ready. And um, in that voice, and I never forget it. And I always remember being able to say, hey, Scott Frost is ready to go play these positions, do this in the game for you. Uh, we feel confident getting this things done. And, and there's no different when you're talking about a position coach talking to a coordinator. So I really believe that you got to give Jonathan Cooley, Chris Shula, um, Lance Shelters, those guys, uh, their veteran leadership, and Jalen Ramsey, who you're talking about, a lot of credit for getting guys ready behind the scenes, for getting guys ready right on site. You know, Sean McVay for the style of practice that we have. Um, you know our temperament, how it goes in the offseason. I think those things all play a part of that. Is there anything about their 49ers offense, player, scheme? Jordan is very tough, and you cut her off. But oh, sorry, Jordan. <laughs> no, please. Don't. We're going to have a really respectable meeting room, media room. Yes, <laughs> starting fights here amongst you guys. Is there anything about the offense, whether it's a player, scheme that keeps you up at night and gives you some concern? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like I'm, all, I never sleep good well these 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 nights anyway. These preparation nights, just just in general, mm -hmm. you know. But for sure. Is trying to stay one step ahead of, you know, arguably uh, one of the better play calls in our league. You know, like I, we got one in this building. Um, you know, they have one in their building for sure, um, and as, as others in the league. But when you're playing those guys in those type of weeks, trying to stay one step ahead. What's going to be his next move? What's his next chess piece? Uh, what holes do they see in the tape? Especially when you know and you've been in the same building and been on the same side of the ball with a guy who you know exactly what he's doing. It took him. Uh, he got to our 11 personnel yesterday about 12:30. Um, he was looking at that and scanning through as he went through base and every other personnel group that he has. Um, he's trying to find little, small, minute details and when he can make us predictable. And you got to know those things. You better study yourself just as much as you're studying him. Yeah, Reed, you, you've known Kyle for a while. 
Too long. those philosophies start to diverge uh, based on the personnel that they were bringing in? You know, I think it's all, you know, the creativity of the guys. You know, um, you watch Zach and what he's done with, since he's gone to Cincinnati and spreading people out and really being creative with the guys that he's got and the people that can stand in different positions and play different ways. And then you watch Kyle Shanahan um, use all the different jokers and, you know, Debo being a tailback and Juszczyk being a tight end or Juszczyk being a right receiver or same thing with Kittle and, all the different jokers that they're able to present and create themselves. And no different than what Sean McVay is able to do um, when you get a chance to see a new fullback be able to go out there and make different plays with all the different play designs and styles that they have. And that's what I kind of mean when you allude to what's next because uh, it's going to be something. And what do you have to adjust to, right? They're always going to have their bread and butter. They're always going to have their scheme. They're always going to be able to, to, pr- to present that dominant run factor that Gary talked about and how they're going to get that thing lined up. And you have an answer for that. And then what's next when it's coming? And something's going to come. And you better be ready to adjust. You better be ready to hit it on the fly. You better be ready to communicate it, more importantly, to your players. Raheem, um, Cooper's off to another good start after a historic season last year. Guys know he's going to get the football on game days. Why is he still so effective? Why is he still able to? Yeah, it's the same thing I say to myself in training camp. It's like uh, you know he's going to get the ball, and, and you can't stop him. It's the amount of work he puts into it. You know, I mentioned those play callers, the Sean McVeighs, the Cal Shanahan's, and if you had a category for receivers and, 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 and intellect and dialogue, Cooper Cup would be right up there. You know, I'd say that he's the best because I haven't been around everybody. But from what I've been around, he is, uh, without a doubt, at, at a different level than most. Um, the amount of work that he puts into it, uh, the amount of work that he looks at your defense and knows what's happening, um, the amount of work that he puts into it with Stafford, the, the way they can communicate with him, Sean, Stafford, um, Liam, all those guys, that whole offensive staff, Eric Yarber, you know, they, they do an amazing job of finding ways to get him the ball. Um, you know, Nick Saban was one of the, I guess, one of the famous people to say back in the day, you got to be able to run it when they know. And I think Cooper's taking that to a whole new level of catching the football and being productive at whatever he's doing. You know, jet sweeps, uh, who knew? You know, he could do whatever. And then in terms of creating separation as a receiver from the defensive perspective, what's the key ingredient that you're trying to take away as a, as a, as a defensive person? Well, thank God I don't have to take away Cooper Cup. But, you know, he's, he's a masterful guy that can get on your edge. He can work on edges better, good as anybody. Um, he can make his moves look exactly the same than when he's going opposite ways. Uh, and now he's added this new vertical element to his game that's just taken him to a whole new level. And I think that's the biggest difference with Cooper Cup. All right, guys. Had the flip card. <laughs>
you know, they've, they've kind of had our number in a lot of ways, right? And you go back and watch the, the NFC Championship game and the way that the, these guys played, I mean, the Rams played them hard and played them tough and you kind of competed at their own game, tried to play physical, tried to get hard, you know, downhill a little bit, ended up having to throw it a little bit in those situations. So many, you know, get back on track, down in distances, ton of third downs that I think 11 of 17, I forget what the exact, you know, stat line was, but, um, you know, you know, it's tough sledding. You know, it's a, it's a very, very fundamentally sound physical unit that we're going up against and um, obviously very skilled. I mean, they, have, they have a ton of first round draft picks. They have a ton of developmental picks that they've had that have really, you know, kind of developed throughout the, over the last couple of years. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely a challenge for sure. Um, you know, I think that it's really just what do we do best? How do we attack these guys in terms of throughout the game? Like, obviously, we have an intent of what we're trying to accomplish going in, but things change a little bit. Some runs throughout a game ended up a little bit different or better or worse than maybe you thought going into it. So I think it's really identifying once we get into the flow of the game what are we having success with and trying to maybe emulate that success throughout the game? I'm not saying you call the same plays over and over again, but hey, if it's working, hey, why don't we continue to go back to that and um, have some of the compliments off of that? Um, it's, not, it's a challenge. I mean, they, they are very stout in the run game, um, but I think our guys are up to the challenge. We did a full padded practice yesterday. We really got some good physical work in in the run game. Um, it was a big emphasis for us. So I think our guys know, our players and our staff know that we do need to establish it. It's just, hey, at what point do we continue to bang our heads against the wall if it's not working? There's been a notable change in their normal pressure packages yeah. versus the pressure packages versus the Rams specifically. Mm -hmm. Totally. Is there a sort of a sense among the O-line, especially with what happened in the Bills game, that this could be a shot to sort of prove something? No question. You know, I mean, if you watch that film, if you're the 49ers, I mean, there's a recipe there that maybe they feel good about because of the way they're built. Um, and that's kind of how they've played a little bit over the last couple of weeks, specifically on third downs. We're used to see a lot more pressure, some things that way. And now you're seeing a little bit more four man rush playing zone coverage, or they do feel good about maybe getting some five man rush man coverage where they have some one on ones. And um, that's the biggest challenge, right? I mean, that's when you have the opportunity to sit back and play zone coverage and rush four and still get a pretty you know, significant rush. Our quarterbacks, our receivers, it's so important that we're at the right depth, the right timing, that the quarterback is playing in rhythm. We talk about DTA, decision timing and accuracy. That is at a paramount this week in terms of understanding you're not probably getting more than a hitch. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to play fast. Um, the quarterback, I think, is geared up for this deal. And I think this is a perfect fit for him to be able to play fast and get his momentum going as well. And uh, the guys know up front that we need a strain. And it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, so out there for sure. Um, what have the problem solving been like over the last couple of weeks? I think it's picking, choosing your spots. Um, you know, that's something we want to be able to utilize tempo as a weapon. We always talk about that. And, and it's more so about, hey, how do we pick and choose our spots and, you know, be able to play fast, but also get into some premier looks. I think we, we've done a nice job of mixing it over the last couple of weeks, finding our identity still, right? We're continuing to fire, find our identity as an offense, huddle, a little bit more of this, you know, in terms of how we get guys in the right spots to be able to use them. So um, I think our guys are really geared up. They understand the plan right now. But um, that's definitely a challenge when you have, when you're looking at the barrel, you're looking down the barrel and you see four man rush and it's kind of closing in on you, but you also see umbrella ish coverage. That's something that I think we've got some better answers for moving into this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. I mean, he, he's got the mentality, right? He's got that mindset and mentality. You saw it show up on special teams last year. And um, when, when we you know, brought this up to him, uh, he was so geared up. He was so jacked up to be able to do some of the things that we were asking him to do. And then you saw him be able to come alive in the pass game as well. So you've, you create a conflict, right? You create a different, another gap in the run game. 
which way is it going when you do get them into the eye? You do create some conflict of which way the lead of the run is going. You can create some split flow. Um, it just creates some different looks for the defense, especially when you're in your normal 11 personnel grouping. Um, and then we've been able to activate him in the past game, and you saw him lead up on Cam's touchdown last week uh, on the linebacker there and, and, and buckled him pretty good and continued on to the end zone. So he's playing physical, he's playing fast, and he's giving us a big-time contribution. No, I don't think so. I think we feel good about you know our matchups on the outside. I mean, it, it's a challenge when you are playing a lot of zone coverage. If we get into some man uh, premier coverages, I think we have a, you know the guys to win. Uh, we feel good about those matchups, but they've got some younger guys in the back end as well. You know, kind of a couple new starters, some different players in the back end that um, they're working through as well. So as do we. So I think it's a little bit about, hey, we're continuing to find our identity in the pass game, picking and choosing our spots to push the ball down the field if we need to. And, and try to be able to pepper completions and you know stay on track. That's the biggest thing is can we stay on track and not live in those known passing situations maybe as much as we have. Sort of on that note, when you guys are workshopping that identity, what does it mean to have a guy like Brandon Powell who maybe is less experienced but has that sort of want to, will to? He's just a football player. You know, he, he, he's, he'll be able to you know, move around a little bit, play him a couple different positions. He's just functional. He's functional and he's explosive when he gets the ball in his hands. He's a competitor. Um, he's played a lot of football. Obviously, he plays a lot of ball throughout the course of the game on the return game. So he's just a natural guy who's um, you're he's talking about somebody that's filling in, but he's also in the flow of the game already because of teams. So you're not worrying about somebody coming off a little bit cold, trying to get into the rhythm of the game. That's half of it when you're really that fourth or fifth wide receiver. When you're not getting a ton of reps and then you're just thrust into a role, that's not easy to do. He, he's already in the flow of the game, which I think helps his mindset and mentality, and he brings it every day. He brings that kind of mindset, and the players love him. Coach, you mentioned DTA. With Cooper Cup, how important is timing because guys know that he's going to do what he's going to totally. do. It's huge. I think he knows, you know, maybe a quick, you know, a tick faster this week, right, in terms of some of the decision making. And I think all of our guys have that sort of mindset. It's not like we need to be in a rush, but we, we do need to have a different sense of urgency all throughout on the offensive side of the ball, whether it be in pass pro, whether it be in run the football, whether it be in the pass game, decisions, all those type of things. I think Cooper understands that this is a little bit different now, and, and we might need to spade up some decisions, but he's so calm and cool, collective on game day. Usually nothing really rattles him or gets him to do something other than what he's normally doing. And then the jet sweep, I mean, obviously he scores mm. a touchdown yeah. that, but is it nice to kind of get that on tape so people know For that sure. it's For sure, and that was, you know, had been a little bit of a staple of our identity over the years prior, and once you hand one of those off, especially you saw the timing of which we did it at, the way that play was executed was such a, such a high level. It was so difficult for the defenders to see where the ball actually was. You put that on tape, now they have to honor it throughout the week. It's a good coaching point. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Appreciate it. Um, just trying to find ways to understand the game plan, what we're doing, and, you know, obviously watching a lot of film that we got against them guys and what we typically seen and new things that we could probably get. So, um, you know, I think we got a good game plan. Just got to go out there, execute it, and trying to find a way to, you know, be victorious. So. <laughs> For sure. This is a divisional game, you know. Um, um, it's important, you know. Anytime you're in a divisional game, you want to continue to be the top dog, and um, you know what kind of type of game is going to be. Physical game, and we got to get after them. So, you guys have played three quarterbacks that are pretty mobile. And now you got Garoppolo, who you've played against a lot, and that's not his mo. But 
what's uh, what's the key to containing him just in the pass game because he has been effective. Yeah, we got to just get out there. You typically get the ball out quick when you play against us, so um, not getting frustrated that Tam's trying to get our hands up and affect the play if we can. Um, I know the guys on the back end going to do their job and trying to help us to make them have to hold it a little longer. And Our job is just to find a way to get them down or affect them, uh, make them uncomfortable, um, and, and trying to make them have a bad day. You know, that's why, that's why we're out there. Um, we don't want them happy. We don't want them have to be able to step up in the pocket or – we want them to be, you know, antsy, uncomfortable, and and if we do that, you know, we can we can have a good day. So that's the thing. I mean, the way their strategy in terms of getting the ball out really quick has been. Well, a lot of quarterbacks been doing that. Been a lot of, you know, um, you get certain looks. You, they want to go, you know, so called one on ones. The ball come out quick to the point you never got time to rush. By the time you engage, you are the ball's out of his hands. So it's, it's a smart, you know, and, and that's us uh, as far as the defense, as far as the. Everybody playing together, secondary, linebackers to us up front. You know, um, for us to have success, we need them guys on the back end to have success. And for us to do what we need to do and affect the play, that can help the guys on the back end. So they work hand in hand. So. When you're studying film, Aaron, how much uh, do you do any, any off season of division opponents, or is the off season more about you? Um, for off season, it's more just me studying myself. Um, obviously, getting certain looks that I know I'm going to get as far as how to defeat certain, you know, slide protections or things that I'm getting or what I can do to, you know, trying to defeat, you know, a triple team or a back chipping or whatever they got going on. Um, so it's, obviously it's just me, you know, more grounded and trying to figure out what I'm doing good, what I'm doing wrong, and what I can do to fix it or make it better. So, so what is the challenge when you're, you've seen this team so much in your career, three times in the last year? Uh, what's the film study challenge for you when you know so much already? Well, it's different this year because they got – a whole pretty much a new offensive line. So it's a lot more studying for me, um, trying to see how they play. And it's only been three games. I know they got a young group, but seeing how they play, certain sets they doing, just, just trying to, you know, get a grasp of what they do and what they're good at, what they're not good at, and just trying to, you know, break it down to a T, you know, that, that I feel like when I'm out there, I'm comfortable enough to understand what I'm going to get, how they're going to set, how they're going to do certain things so I can be able to play, you know, fast. Um, we was, it, it, I think it come down to the whole defense, just swarming. You know, at, at times he'd be in the backfield and um, find a way to get them down. If sometimes they might bring them in reverse or a screen, we all got to swarm and, and tackle. You know, that's what it come down to, not missing missing tackles and um, bottom them up, not, let us, not letting them get itself going. And if we do that, um, you know, we can eliminate them. So that's, the, that's what you got to do. You got to try to find a way to eliminate them because he's a big part of that team, big part of that offense. And, um, they move them around at so many places, so it ain't just one or two guys that got to worry about them. It's the whole defense. So, Aaron, Bobby's obviously not the only guy who's familiar with the 49ers and their offense, but I mean, with the amount of times he has played them in his career to this point, what have you noticed about um, that familiarity as far as the impact it's had on your guys' preparation? What, what Bobby? Yeah, how it's helped, if at all. Well, I, I wouldn't, I guess it helped, but. Um, him just understanding how we're going to play this week, understanding the game plan, what we're going to be doing, certain looks we're going to be doing, um, certain things we're going to be checking into. So um, I think it's just more of what he got to do here with us um, and him understanding that. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is there anything new you were learning from like his experience going against them versus your guys' stories about him? Really no, not, not that different. Aaron, just a couple more. Huh? I'm sorry. Oh, they've been playing good. They've been playing good, um, making some big plays at times, being stout, finding a way. I think last week showed, you know, we, even though I feel like we played a lot of plays, we could have we did, we did some things better as a defense. But um, overall, we didn't allow, allow them to score or get in the end zone. So that, that's a big shout out to, you know, the secondary doing things, being stout, making big plays at times, um, deflecting passes and um, – you know, that's what it's about, you know. Um, anytime you got guys that go down, you want the guy that, you know, to step up and, and going to be playing and, you know, not have a drop-off. And I think, you know, that kind of showed no drop-off. And um, guys made plays when they needed to make plays, and we found a way to win, so. Um, I know you can't get into, like, technical secrets too much, or, but in terms of what you said earlier about getting arms and throwing lanes and, and those types of things, when a team on offense does have a quick game like that that they – is there a 
can you tell there's like a teaching point to the O lineman to try to pin arms in that regard? And how do you kind of work through? Well, that? what you mean pin arms from you like, get jumping? Yeah. Well, you just got to protect when you jump because they can, you know, hit you down and you've getting, it happened to me multiple times before. But, um, yeah, there's, there's certain things they do. They, they can chop you down when you're jumping up. So it's about protecting yourself too. So um, that's about it. I, I know we make it effective. I, I wish I can do it, but I, I couldn't. I was out there messing with doing walkthrough. I was messing around trying to do the Vaughn Ghost, but that ain't, that ain't me. But um, you know, he had a lot of success doing that, and um, him being a, a quick guy, smaller guy, able to bend a certain way. You know, he, he's just a different type of guy. So that's mostly something you know on the outside. You can't do that for me. No, I ain't got. I ain't got. I got this much space, and I got <laughs> three, four guys. Ain't no way I'm getting that. <laughs> do you see that much space with me? No, I don't get that no more. That's gone. I ain't never gonna get that. Forget about it. You had to work with 100 sacks by a true defensive tackle. It's a pretty limited list of guys in NFL history. Do you feel an extra sense of gratification that you've been as dominant as you have from a position that traditionally does not produce a lot of sacks? Um, just playing. You know, obviously it's a blessing to accomplish great things, but just playing a game and just doing my job and. I'm trying to find ways to be successful, help my team to win, and um, being consistent. You know, that's what it's about in this league. Um, so just playing a game and playing, playing, at, playing at a high level um, to see the hard work pay off and accomplish something, it's, it's a blessing. But um, still got a lot more football left, and, you know, I, I, got, I got room for improvement. So. All set? Yeah.